Many Aboriginal students attending residential school, though, have been able to adjust, mature, and develop into contributing members of the white man's society and or their own native communities. Studies have shown, though, that many survivors of childhood of abuse and military type of discipline have found themselves even decades later having symptom, <coughs> pardon me, having symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder, similar to that experienced by veterans and police officers. Panic attacks, <coughs> insomnia, uncontrollable anger, alcohol and drug addiction, <coughs> sexual inadequacy, the inability to form intimate relationships, eating disorders, and much more common symptoms. This is the end of my story, and I'm sorry, it doesn't have a happy ending. It tells of an idea that went wrong. The churches eventually realized what they were contributing to for over a hundred years, and all denominations withdrew from their role running residential schools by 1974. Most of the denominations, if not all, have formally expressed a public apology to the Aboriginal people. Lawsuits against the government, the churches, and individuals have been filed by the Aboriginal people seeking compensation for abuse and cultural and language deprivation and more. Most denominations have reached an agreement with the government as to the uh, portions of the settlements that will be paid by the church and by the government. The Presbyterian Church, although a small denomination, has chosen to do more than its, uh, just pay its share. $500,000 has been set aside for the development of structures and programs that will attempt to rebuild the relationship between the Aboriginal people and the people of the church. A committee composed of Aboriginal and church representatives was formed in 2003 and charged with developing a plan. The public confession by our denomination in 1994 was the starting point for the committee. The committee regretfully found that there had been little change in the 10 years before they were, since 1994. In spite of the acknowledgement in the confession that says, quote, God not only calls the church to confession, but to a ministry of reconciliation, walking together, seeking to restore justice in relationships where it's lacking. The Presbyterian Church now has a plan, although it's not fully implemented. The recent Remember the Children tour, which was initiated and organized by our denomination, was an effective beginning. You might have seen some media coverage of this particular tour. The national leaders of the First Assembly of First Nations, the Anglican Church of Canada, the United Church of Canada, the Presbyterian Church of Canada, and representatives of the Roman Catholic Church traveled in early March of this year to Ottawa, Vancouver, Winnipeg, and Saskatoon to highlight the need for healing and reconciliation. The response of the public to each event was emotional and powerfully encouraging. The tour had a profound effect on each of the church leaders, all of whom commented on how deeply and personally they had been changed by the process, and how taking part in the events had deepened their commitment to follow up the work of healing and reconciliation. The Presbyterian Church's Healing and Reconciliation Program focuses first and most emphatically upon building awareness in the church of the Aboriginal people, the church's involvement in their history, and the current situation. Building the awareness includes hearing from people such as me, but it also includes studying material available from many sources, such as including the Presbyterian Church. But the most meaningful awareness can result from listening to to and having dialogue with Aboriginal people who have experienced residential schools. The second phase of the program involves the building of ongoing relationships between some Aboriginal people 
and the members of a congregation or group. It is hoped that through the process of building awareness and listening to the stories from Aboriginal people, shared interests might develop related to community activity or project. The key here is that it be a shared interest and not an interest that the congregation has to help or fix what they perceive to be an Aboriginal problem. The third phase of the program of reconciliation will happen as the Aboriginal people and the members of our congregation work together as equals on a shared, pro shared project that serves a useful purpose. Working together, striving for cooperation and sharing will increase the understanding and acceptance of each member of the group. That understanding and acceptance will result in reconciliation. The story I told was not a pleasant one, nor is the response I'm suggesting simple and obvious. It could be that you're thinking now, that was an interesting message, but it'll be nice to have Reverend Lewis back in the pulpit preaching next time. Reconcil reconciliation is something, something that can happen only at the congregational member level. Now I'm asking you, as a Christian whom Christ has taught to love one another, how are you going to respond? What are your thoughts now about the relocating of a group of First Nation people to Stratford and another group to Waterloo as their homes were flooded for a few, a few months ago? What do you think the next time you see a headline in the paper or someone, you hear someone say something that's negative about Aboriginal people? Will you say, ah, a stupid, demanding idiot? Or will you say, I wonder if that new story is balanced and accurate? Or it's too bad that some of the Aboriginal people lack the ability and resources to deal with that situation better. Others of you may be thinking, this is a very sad to hear that some of God's people live under such bad circumstances. While I have such, so much to be thankful for, I just don't know what to do. And besides, what difference could one person make? I'm sure that a number of you feel that latter feeling. So, you're not one person. You're a member of a group. What could happen now if you're willing to get a little bit of time, as that group could get together to learn a little more, and build more awareness. I'm sure, I'm sure that Reverend Lewis and others would be happy to support such a group as they try to find interesting ways to learn more together. And I'm eager to assist as well. The plight that too many of our Aboriginal brothers and sisters find themselves in is awful. We, as colonizers and the dominant society, have contributed to that situation. The Indian Act has and continues to be a major contributor to an almost impossible situation. But that's another story for another day. The confession that our church made to God and the Aboriginal people in 1994 was a big first step in acknowledging our wrongs. But a confession requires more than just acknowledgement. We must not continue to ignore the situation. We need to increase our awareness, begin dialogue with our Aboriginal neighbors, and work with them to improve our communities, our relationships, and the country. By talking and working together, we will find the healing and reconciliation that's needed.